you know, I think I'm going to continue on in this vein for a little bit um, to try to help those who have the ears to hear. You know, we're looking at society today and we're watching our society erode at an unprecedented level. And I don't think it's ever going to return. And that's just the sad part about it. So since it's not going to return, the only hope that we have is to do exactly uh, what the scriptures tell us do, which is come out of her, my people, and be ye separate. And in being separate, there is an agenda that we need to be doing. There's a mindset. And I want to talk about just the basis of family structure and family values so that we don't fall prey uh, to this wicked feminist agenda here in this society right here. Because when you look at American society, and mind you, it's, it's allegedly a monogamous society. Notice I say alleg allegedly, uh, because there really truly ain't too many monogamous people, families, or couples, or unions in this American society. Uh, they try to champion themselves by dressing things up on books and stuff, but it's, it's sad. It's sad when a woman cannot be the man's wife or that man's woman until the day that she dies, but she has to have so many men and certain uh, personalities and DNA into them. It's just really sad today. A woman is only designed for one man. I'm going to say it again. A woman is only designed for one man. Now, we're going to get back to some serious morality and some construct here. So you put your seatbelts on and get ready. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, this is Pastor Dowell. I have a patron channel. You don't hear more on this stuff like this. Go over to my patron, join and support. Also, smash the like button on this um, so that this work can get out even more so to people. All right, let's talk about the family structure here in society and actually reproducing yourself, all right? First of all, number one, the woman does not have a seed. She's an incubator. She carries the seed of a man. And if I said it once, I said it a thousand times. I don't believe that no baby out there that is born is a mistake. I also think it's a serious social genocide when you have black women aborting upwards of 900 babies a day. That means black women are killing melanated black boys and girls to a tune of 900 babies a day in this society right here. And does that not sound like the sacrifices of Molech? Sound like the uh, make your children pass through the fire like in Babylon? It's just that we're dressing up doing it a different way and no wonder we're cursed with a curse as a nation. And no wonder the women's mindset all jacked up. Now, I'm not making this video to get on women. I'm gonna talk to us both. And I realize that when I say something that you don't like, I understand that Satan is automatically gonna put up a defense mechanism in your mind thinking that I'm the enemy when I'm telling you the truth, when I'm showing you how to improve. Because you think about this, if you do what your grandparents and what you have done all of your life, what does the future generations look like for you? Because the truth is, according to the book, a man is supposed to be able to build a legacy for his children's children. Did you hear what I said? For his children's children. When you look at the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the Carnegies, and, and, and all these so-called allegedly successful people in this world, what is the difference between them and then those of us who are just living every day trying to get by? What's the difference? Well, I'm going to tell you what the difference is. The difference is this. The difference is, is that in the black community or in any community whatsoever at all, be it black, white, red, yellow, blue, purple, green, or brown, is that we have an out of order problem. You see, if there's a man out there that is responsible and reliable. And if there's a woman out there that is respectful, feminine, and submissive to a man, the type of home that should be built that will last through generations is when this intelligent man who has proven himself, regardless of what people think about in this world, is when this intelligent man has built some form of wealth through lands and homes all right, now listen to me. 
when he has his seed from the woman, man inserts his seed into the woman, his sperm into the woman, she brings forth his child. I'm going to say it again. The child belongs to the man. And see, if you're kicking against this, that's because you're a rebellious, stubborn, wicked-ass Jezebel that's been influenced by this wicked-ass society that has all but been the problem to help us as a, as a people to stay conquered and divided because you won't get in your role. And neither will the man get in his role. But I'm gonna tell it like it is, and I don't give a damn if you like it or not. And I'm gonna, and if you got a better solution, and if you're doing better than me in this life, then I maybe would have an opportunity to listen to you. But if you ain't, you just sit down and shut up and listen. All right, and that's how you do that. All right, so here we go. The man is searching seed into the woman that he chooses. All right, and then the man. His whole ideal is in order to be successful and have successful generations coming out to him. If we're going to even begin to start to be like uh, a lot of the rich white people that we see that are successful, something's got to change. You see, if I have seed, I want my seed to have my mindset. I want my seed to be able to take the mind that I have and to put my mind into their children that's coming after them. Do you know the reason why I say that? Because I'm more successful than my granddaddy. I'm more successful than my daddy. My mind is totally different than, than all of them. And you can just do nothing but look sincerely at, at, at my life and any other man's life who is responsible and reliable and takes care of their responsibilities and he's the alpha male and the male and the man, the head of his house. You see, my mind will be able to last for generations to come. My mind will make sure that my children's children would be able to have a roof over their head, clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, and guess what? They don't have to get out here and hit it on this natural slave plantation, being a W-2 wage earner, if they do things the way that I say it. You know why? Because I'm the creator, I'm the originator of this. That's how you build wealth. I know how to build businesses. I know how to start businesses. I know how to have a successful family. I know how to be married. I know how to manage. And so, if you got a woman that will, watch this, watch this, be a help meet to that man. That means she's not coming up there telling him what to do. She's coming aside beside him and helping him in his, in his life. Because the Bible says, woman and I desire and that's what's wrong with this society right here is that instead of the woman being designed and being molded by a good holy responsible mother to to watch this to respect their husbands to love their husbands to submit to their husbands you get in the direct opposite you see the reason why our society is all tore up now because of the council that they're receiving from bitter, bitter Lucy, bitter Betty, and all the rest of these dysfunctional, schizophrenic women out here that ain't got the pot to piss in and the one of the damn throw it out of. You can't go receive bad counsel from someone that ain't got shit. If you understand what I mean. You can't do that and be successful. Woman, your desire and your design is once you are saddled up with a good man. Your desire is supposed to be to him. And the Bible says that he shall rule over you. Do you understand that kind of talk? See, the problem today is in this feminine I ain't let nobody rule over me. No, nobody but your own wicked, evil, demonic, dumb, dormant, docile, demoralized, demonized mindset that is keeping us, keeping us under oppression. That's keeping us poor. That's keeping our families dysfunctional. You know the reason why I say that? Because... 72% of marriages that start in American society end in divorce and the woman is the one who originates it. And then if you get remarried, you stand an 80% chance of getting divorced. So guess what? You cannot follow a woman's lead. In any way, shape, fashion, and form, man, you are the head by divine fiat. Now I'm talking about reliable, responsible men. I'm not talking about dogs. I'm not talking about people who just want to go out there and just stick their little pecker in any damn thing and not be responsible for their children, who don't love their children, love women. You also have enough sense to know 
And women, don't sit up and tell me that the man ain't crap um, because he this and this and that. Hold on. Hold on, damn it. You are the problem to this whole damn situation that we looking at in our dysfunctional society and our dysfunctional tribe. You are the problem. You know the reason why you are the problem? Because you keep going out there having babies by four or five different baby daddies all because of you. Well, I don't know what the hell is going on with you. And you keep killing our seed and our children. Man only has two forms of birth control. A condom and a bisectomy. A woman has over 30, 30 different avenues that she can actually go and actually obtain some form of birth control. So you telling me with over 30 something things on the market to whereby you can actually not have a seed or not have a baby, you're gonna blame it all on a man. It takes two to tango. See, another problem we having is nobody taking responsibility. Because if you're waiting for this world, this wicked ass society right here, United States of America, to be for us and to be for our plight and to raise our families and our children and to and, and to actually make, no, no. Their laws on that book is designed to make sure that we stay destroyed, to make sure we stay under the thumb of oppression, to stay up under tyranny, to make sure that our, our, our society never grows. There's never inheritance. There ain't too many black people in this world that own any damn thing. Not too many. And it's bad when you got the people that don't own shit doing the proverbial crab in a bucket, pointing their fingers and judging those who are successful and trying to bring our ass up out of this wicked cancerous condition that we in. So we got to get the family order right from the very beginning. You see, I want to put my mind in, into my seed and train them up in the way that they should go because I know that if they have my mindset, and I'm speaking for every responsible man out there, I know if they have my mindset that they're going to be more successful because they're going to have a baseline platform already set for them. Now, the way I do things is totally different than a lot of people. I am making sure that anyone that is in the ministries of Straightway and you live on a community, that you will be successful. Your seed will be successful because we'll be joined together in one tribe. Because my success comes from following what the Bible says. Other people's uh, dysfunctional, disillusional lifestyle comes because of rebellion against the word and they're afraid to pick it up and obey it and do what it says. That's the problem we have today. Is people are afraid to pick up the Bible and do exactly what it says. But, hey, don't tell me that your mind today and, and the way your life is and you wasted 40, 50, 60 damn years of your life. Don't tell me that your mindset, your life is, is, the, is the blueprint that we need to be following today. No, you need to follow my blueprint. And anyone that's in the ministry need to follow my blueprint because I have a successful blueprint. Be you in the ministry or outside the ministry, if you follow that, you are guaranteed to be successful. Now, see what our women want to do. I seen a thing on that the other day, whole phase. What the hell is a whole phase? You mean women going out there seeing how many men and they can get how many diseases they can acquire? And they ain't you got women counseling you and telling you you need a whole faith. What the do you know every time a man searches DNA into you that you are changed forever? A woman's most prolific years is between 15 and 35. Them are the most prolific childbearing years. Those are her best days of her life, right there, for bearing children. Now, I'm not saying go out there and get no damn 15-year-old. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. I should have just said 18 and 35, but you know how people stupid they are. But anyway, so you check this out. All right? You go from 18 to 35, 15 to 35, whatever it is, and I can't understand why somebody would want a 15-year-old anyway unless somebody is 17 and 16. Uh, man, I can understand that, but not at my age. But anyway, but check this out. By the time a woman get in her 40s, a man, going back to the man, a man should have, you, you should have been out there busting your ass, busting your tail to make sure that you have a legacy for your seed. Because 
your, your greatest income value hits when you get around 40 years old, all the way up to the day you die. 40 years old to the day you die because you know, while you're young, you're setting the baseline, you're setting things in order. And if you're trying to go out there and spend your life wasting it on fun, and foolishness and frivolity and, and trying to go out there and, and please this wicked ass unsubmitted Jezebel woman that loves talking back to you when you should get rid of her ass and find somebody better I notice I'm only talking about reliable alpha males this real talk this is how you raise successful families man you look for a submissive woman a woman that will respect you a woman that is feminine not a woman that will back talk you and stuff. A woman that's shame faced like the book says. Everything I'm telling you is what the Bible says. And if anybody disagrees with against this, that's because you're demonic as hell. But woman, after you done had two or three children, you in your 40s and stuff like this, your glory days is, is well past you. And so you should be doing everything you can to be that Proverbs 31 woman to help build a, a, a family business or a build a family home and, and to be respectable and honorable to the people in the household and stuff. You should be doing everything you can to make sure that you pour into those children a support base that they follow the father, especially if he's a successful man and trying to build a legacy. But now what we got there, we got there, the book says that a wise woman builds the house, but a foolish woman will pluck it down with her hands. And let's just really truly take a hard look at our homes today. Are we building or is it foolish as hell? And we still murmuring and complaining and belly aching on what we should be doing or what should or could have been. See, I'm, I'm next month I'll be 54 years old. I ain't got time for a bunch of bullshit. I don't. I don't have time for the drama. I don't have time for them games. I don't. And I ain't gonna have it either. Not in my house. I'd be damned if I'm gonna sit up here and go through the same old crap I went through my 20s and 30s dealing with damn women. Ain't no way in hell. Man, if your home is out of order, it's because you out of order. You won't put your foot down and you sorry because you don't know how to lead by example. All you do is cry and bellyache. I ain't looking for no government handouts in any way, shape, fashion, or any damn form. I don't have a man, uh, an entitlement mentality. Neither damn you should you. I work my ass off. Every day I do. Besides the Sabbath, I work my ass off. And when I have seed, that man, that boy, I'm going to put my mind is all that I can. There's no guarantee. Because, man, the devil, he pulls hard. There's no guarantee that they're going to be after your mind. Sons. You should have the mind of your father, especially if he's a successful man. You see, we're going to stay the ass and never be successful. We keep doing things which is right in our own eyes. Nobody wants judges. Everybody wants to do that which is right in their own damn eyes. And when you look at it, and you look at all these years that's been wasted, boy, young man, you ain't shit. You ain't shit because you won't submit. Is that making any damn sense? I'm talking about men who are trying to do this thing right. So let's cap this thing off. Man, you first be a man of integrity and honor. You take care of your responsibilities. You lead by example. You put yourself in order so that way you can put your woman in order. Woman, you submit. Woman, you respect your man. You reverence him. According to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, you obey him. And you have shame facing this when, and honor when you're speaking with him. You help him build that seed up, man. You put your mind into that seed that's coming afterwards so that you can build a legacy and build a future for your children's children so that they don't have to go through the same struggles and fights that we had to. I've had to work my ass off in order to get to where I'm at today. And it didn't come without opposition. My greatest foes have literally been they a melanated people of my own damn household, literally. And and really, black folks, my greatest damn foes. And it's sad. So take what I say, listen to this video again, again, and again, and a damn again. And if you listen to what I say, may the most high bless you and you be successful in your endeavors. And I hope that you're able to prepare a legacy for your children's children. But I'm gonna tell you this, if you got a woman in your home that won't go as you go, 
and don't have your same mindset to build, you need to put her ass away. Don't let her set up that question you toe to toe and face to face. Don't let her do that. As soon as you give her a little leeway of doing that, that, that damn spirit is going to take you over and it's going to continue to keep on going. And once you get a little, I told you, woman, I told you, man, I told you, man, she don't care nothing at all about your troubles, about your struggles. It's all about her. That's because she is out of order of y'all. She's not following what the book says. Ain't trying to follow what the book says. She's trying to be God. Not only she's trying to be God, she's trying to be God, judge, jury, and executioner. See, in this world, she knows she's got the backing of his wicked society. That's why he got to opt out and do things wisely. Because without her husband, the state, she ain't shit. She ain't got nothing. Anyway, hope to say something stimulate thought. Have a good day.